United States. And um, so when he passed away in a motorcycle accident on the Santa Monica freeway, my stepmother remarried because I was, uh, my real mother died when I was young, very young. And consequently, when she remarried, my half-brothers were kind of a royal pain in the tush when I tried to do homework. So I used to go over to the same cemetery that uh, Marilyn Monroe was buried in to do my homework. I found this one time. I used to take a whoa, shortcut. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To- now you're sounding a little weird, I guess, is the phrase here. Okay, so how old are you again? You're eight and a half? I'm eight and a half. You're eight and a half. You go to, to Marilyn school. Monroe's burial okay. site. Let, me, let me back up a little bit. Sure. Well, I used to uh, go to international school, you know, with the embassy. And mostly it was Spanish-speaking and American or English-speaking students. Um, most of the South American countries that have embassies in Los Angeles went to this school. And it was on the opposite side. I forgot the name of the, the Memorial Cemetery um, right off the tip of my tongue. That's what happens when you get older. But I used to take a shortcut through the cemetery to get to our home, which was on the opposite side, um, just off of Santa Monica Boulevard. And consequently, um, I found this great little Jewish corner of the cemetery that had a, a, a stone table. And it had these really cool engravings on it. And I didn't know what they said because it was in Hebrew. But I was able to lay out my books and do my homework without any interruption from my two little brothers. And so one evening it was getting pretty dark. And I saw this woman walking through the cemetery. And she was sobbing as she's walking through. So I decided, okay, I'm going to escort her out, the good boy Scott that I was. Picked up my books and started to follow her. And as she walked into one of the mausoleums, I uh, was probably about uh, 50 yards behind her. And I went in behind her, and she wasn't there. So I thought, okay, maybe I didn't see her walk in because I was at the side when the door opened. Uh, A few days later, I saw her again. Only this time, she looked at me, and she waved at me, and she kept on going. And so I, again dashed behind her and and I was almost running and I actually followed her within 50 feet um, into the mausoleum and she wasn't there. So that pretty much told me that I was seeing a ghost and when I told my family they started laughing at me and uh, so I pulled out the old browning that my uh, father had given me uh, the last Christmas we'd had together And I took it with me every day to the cemetery to catch a picture of her. I never did see her again, but that kind of started, a, uh, I guess, a trend. Because uh, for the last, uh, I'm going to date myself now, but for the last 35 years, I, uh, as I travel the world with my work, I always go to cemeteries and photograph cemeteries because I think they're some of the most beautiful places around the world and it tells me a lot about the cultures. Did you have any repetitions of these ghostly or apparition type encounters? I've got a lot of really cool stuff on uh, on film. I used to do my own black and white developing when I was younger because it was much cheaper than getting it done. I uh, also earned my merit badge doing that. And then when I went to Finland, I uh, actually took up uh, some photo- uh, photography classes and did that. And I worked in a photo studio for a while uh, while I was working my way through university. So, yeah, I've been doing it a long time. Then the age of digital analysis or digital videos and, and uh, photography came about. And I had to learn a whole new bag of tricks. So you started learning things like Photoshop and Adobe After Effects and stuff like that? Actually, I didn't start learning those until probably, I'd say, the last five years Um, I used to have to teach some clients how to use uh, Adobe Photoshop for touching up their photographs for presentations and whatnot. And uh, and then I realized, hey, there's a lot of stuff that could be done with this. And then I started to look at photography in general to see how I can enhance my pictures, Uh, not the paranormal stuff, but the artistic side. And I got into uh, basically going into the monochromatic modes and then into the infrared and did a lot of infrared photography, um, which is, you get some pretty cool t- uh, effects with infrared. Okay, well, let's get to the chase here. Let's cut to the chase. Yari, did you photograph anything weird in the oh, sense of I, paranormal? Let's just say that. I have photographed all kinds of weird stuff that have happened, not only in cemeteries, but on investigations over the years. One event that I remember happening was I was in high school. 
as my senior year, as I said, in the United States and just outside the little desert community my grandmother lived in in Arizona, there was a Jewish cemetery that on Halloween, all the kids would go out there and start to mess around, you know, to show how brave they were to their uh, uh, to their girlfriends. Well, consequently, during that period of time, I was out there a couple of days before staking it out to see just what was so cool about this Jewish cemetery. And I did uh, catch some apparitions by one of the old mausoleums. And it seemed to be like three three personages that were and they're partial apparitions on film. And I actually had to check my camera and film to make sure that there was nothing wrong with it. And I even took it to other people to have a look at it and say, what do you think of this? And uh, one of my, uh, my the teachers that taught me, she worked in the studio, she said that uh, it looks like you got some ghosts out there. And I thought, you got to be kidding. So that was really what, what, what kicked it off for me. I'm going to uh, ask you, obviously, Yari, whether those photos are posted online, whether we could look at them or have access to the negatives if any third parties want to analyze them. But you're going to have to hold that thought because that's how it okay. works in real radio here. If you have a comment or a question about the Paracast, write us, news at theparacast.com, news at theparacast.com. Our guest is Yari Mikola. He's editor of the Journal of Anomalous Sciences. He has a website called The Dimension Zone, which kind of aggregates all sorts of paranormal stuff, including UFOs, and we'll get to that in a moment. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in The Paracast. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number, 1-877-804-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-877-804-MY-TV 1-877-804-MY-TV disable the cable cut costs and get more call 1-877-804-MY-TV 1-877-804-MY-TV gold it's like nothing else on earth from the romans through the renaissance from the industrial age to the space age gold has weathered the test of time for six thousand years gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Skip the long lines and high prices at the florist because right now at proflowers.com, you can get two dozen assorted roses with a free glass face and a free box of chocolates for just $29.99. Just visit proflowers.com, look for the radio microphone in the upper right corner, and enter the secret code 4444. Unlike overpriced flowers at the florist, which sit in the cooler for days, our flowers are sent fresh cut from the fields and are guaranteed to stay fresh and beautiful for at least seven full days. Just visit proflowers.com today to get two dozen assorted roses with a free glass vase and free chocolates for only $29.99. Order now and pick the delivery date you want. It's guaranteed. But hurry, because Valentine's Day is this Monday, and our special offer ends this Friday. The only way to get this amazing deal is to visit proflowers.com. Look for the radio microphone in the upper right corner and enter the secret code 4444. 
Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way, and you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for survivalseedbank.com. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Hello, this is John Burroughs, one of the witnesses to the Rendlesham UFO incident. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. You're in the Paracast with Gene Steinberg and Chris O'Brien. Our guest this week is Yari Mikola, and he has a site called The Dimension Zone. And it sounds a little bit like the Twilight Zone, but it's a place where you can learn more about his interest in the paranormal. And the obvious question I asked before we had our station break is these photos you took of possible apparitions, are they posted anywhere for us to look at? As far as the ones uh, that I had on film, no, those are not available, only because they're in boxes in the United States in a storage room. Uh, As far as a lot of the digital, I do have some digital photography, and some of it is posted within the Dimension Zone. Uh, on the pages that you looked at for the analysis that everybody's been talking about. That's a UFO photo analysis that we'll get to shortly. Go ahead. Um, the last page that I still haven't submitted is actual photographs that I find uh, paranormally uh, uh, either um, paranormally, I want to say significant, which is they are definite paranormal events or compelling. So I, I do have some evidence on both video and digital that I'd like to place. Okay, so you don't mind people looking over that stuff to see what's going on. Now, about about the boxes that you have back in the United States. Now, are these things that you could basically fly over some time and spend a few hours and dig up or what? You know, there's hundreds of photographs because, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, I don't know whether we were on the air or not, but one of my hobbies is photographing cemeteries. And over the years, I've taken hundreds and hundreds of photographs of cemeteries, and I haven't really had a chance to catalog them all. So they're pretty much stuck in envelopes. A lot of the newer stuff that I have, of course, it's a lot easier to catalog on digital format because then you have files and backups. Um, So it it would take some time. But, yeah, I could probably pull some up. I don't plan a trip to the States until September. But, uh, yeah. The reason I ask that is we've had several guests on the PowerCast in recent months. And they say, you know, they've got these photos, they've got this, they've got that. And we say, can you post them online? They say, yes. And I'll mention Ray Stanford so far, who has a bunch of evidence that he's promised to post, audio evidence, and we're still waiting for it. Hopefully Ted Phillips, the guy who studies UFO trace evidence, he's going to post his stuff. So, you know, having said that, I should tell you the people on the PowerCast, especially our PowerCast forums, are going to press you. To make that trip, of course, they're not going to pay your plane fare, unfortunately. Oh. Well, there is um, a, a few photographs that I posted that were sent to me on uh, the photographic analysis uh, section of the website. Did okay. I lose you? Sure. Now, would you give our listeners the location? The reason I'm not actually putting the site in front of me right now is because they've got background music on many of the pages. So I think it would be great to have the background music, but you want to listen to the show and us talk. So I won't play the background music, but would you tell people the direction if they want to go to the Dimension Zone, where do they find these pages with the pictures? The easiest way to find it is when you log into the DimensionZone.com, you'll be greeted by a strange looking portal. And as you mouse over, you'll see the different uh, clusters of websites that are planned. Uh, We're not uh, releasing the Dimension Zone. We're not going live with it, even though everything is online uh, until uh, September of this year. 
Uh, we're also planning an event over at Waverly Hills a Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky to kick it off. Um, but if you, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, about 5 o'clock is a button for the paranormal. Uh, when you click on that, it'll take you into a, a, a welcome page for the paranormal, and it's called The Book of Shadows. So it does a little fun stuff just to kind of keep people interested, and then you can either break in or, or read through it and then uh, wait till the key pops up. And within the Book of Shadows, you've got two open pages that uh, talk everything from about the living, death and dying, entities, ghost spirits. But there's a section there that's called the World of Knowledge. Uh, if you click on the World of Knowledge, it'll take you into the analysis pages. Okay, so the pictures you provide, stuff that you've had yourself, you've taken yourself. Do you have third parties analyze them? I do, actually. You know, before I ever post anything, I have colleagues that I concur with. You know, I, I again, reputation is everything. And if I want to, you know, call something evidence, I want to verify that it is, in fact, evidence. And, you know, a lot of times we, we get to the point where we want something so badly that uh, pareidolia takes effect, whether it's auditory or visual pareidolia. And we that's where you see images that aren't really there. It's like children picking out uh, a bear in the clouds. This is what pareidolia is for your listeners that uh, may not be familiar with it. Matrixine, I think, is what the TAPS team calls it. But uh, when you're looking at, at, at photography, a lot of times the pareidolia takes over without you realizing that you're doing it. So you got to make sure that I'm not wanting something bad enough that I find something. Does that make sense? Kind of a Rorsatch test. Yeah, pretty much. And, 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 and trust me, Rorsatch, I see all kinds of ghosts in those. Okay, so you obviously have to make sure that these images are distinct enough. Are they distinct? Do you see just flashes or blurs or do you see, hey, this looks like a guy or a gal or something? Well, exactly. And, and you know, when you start looking at uh, so many photographs of, uh, let's say, a trip that you may have taken uh, to Gettysburg, you know, I, it, I've got a page called The World's Most Haunted, and of them there's 11 places, and of which I've been to seven of them. And I, you know, every time I go, I'm never disappointed. You know, something paranormal happens, whether I get some really good EVPs or I get some type of, uh, of uh, I don't do very much video because I, when I do video, I have to watch every single frame. Uh, so it's time consuming, but a lot of photographs. And for an average person to, to pick out a photograph, what's be the beauty of digital age is that you can take hundreds of photographs and it doesn't cost you anything if you didn't catch anything. But if you're using film and you develop 100 prints, you're going to be paying a small fortune. Well, the problem with digital, of course, and I'm going to phrase that, is that a lot of those pictures are very easy to fake. As more and more of the high-end tools become affordable, accessible, you don't have to be a professional digital imaging specialist to create what to the average person would seem a credible fake, right? Oh, well, exactly. I never believe anything that I see anymore. And the reason for my having wanting to learn about forensics and digital analysis and video digital analysis is that I want to be able to look to see what people do to create fakes. Years ago, I had my own company called Safeco in Finland, which identified viruses. And in order to be able to identify a virus, you had to be able to write one. Okay, this is computer viruses, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, you know, the same thing with, with forging a video or forging a digital, any type of digital photograph. You know, in order for me to be able to determine if something is a fake, I'm going to be able to create one. Okay. So, basically, the best researcher for computer-based viruses is someone who can fake it. So, conversely, can we also say the person who can detect fake photos has to know how to create those fake photos? Well, I think if they can detect it, they could create them. It, it depends on what their savvy is with software, because software sometimes, you know, I mean, when you get the manual, it's like weighs as much as a Volkswagen, uh, especially when you're looking at Adobe software. Uh, so the thing is, is in order to be able to do it, you got to have effective tools. And the same thing with, with I want to say, identifying what tools the ho hoaxers had used. Well, that certainly helps, and we'll go more into that in a moment. Our guest is Yari Mikola, and the site is thedimensionzone.com. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then, a coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack! Attack! Of the Rockwells. The former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes, The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack of the Rockoids is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Attack of the Rockoids, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition. If you owe money to the IRS, you can't make the problem go away by yourself. But with the help of Dan Pilla, you can get your problem solved once and for all. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. For 30 years, I've helped thousands of people solve their tax debt problem, and I can help you solve yours, too. We take a very simple but proven three-step approach to solving your problem. First, we stabilize IRS collection actions so you don't have to worry about the IRS seizing your bank account or paycheck. Next, we build a comprehensive plan to get your tax debt reduced to the fullest extent possible, sometimes even completely eliminated. And finally, we work with you every step of the way to get your problem solved once and for all. Call us for a free consultation. Call 1-800-346-6829. We'll work together to get your problem solved guaranteed. Dan Pilla has been protecting taxpayers from the IRS for three decades, and he can help you too. Call us today at 800 800- 346-6829 that's 800 34 no tax where have all the military surplus stores gone don't worry you don't need one because everything you need at military surplus is at mainmilitary.com that's m-a-i-n-e military.com one of the last surviving true military surplus stores in the country go online now to mainmilitary.com and discover a source for hard to find surplus items at true surplus prices surplus gun cleaning kits as low as $2.99 complete chemical suits as low as $11.99 see our huge selection of gas masks filters and accessories finish and M10 gas masks are three for $30. And Swiss filters are three for $12. Searching for Strike Anywhere matches? MainMilitary.com has them. Plus a whole new product line of survival and first aid kits and lots more. Get free shipping on orders over $50 only at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com. Or call 877-608-0179. 877-608-0179. MainMilitary.com. The main name in military supply. Before you throw away your used batteries, you need to listen to this. Now, going green can save money. Go green and save money by giving life to your used batteries by charging them with the Renaissance Charger. The Renaissance Charger uses a new revolutionary battery charging technology that effectively extends the life of new batteries and gives new life to used batteries. Invented by legendary audio genius John Bedini, this unique and patented charging system rejuvenates the electrochemical plate structure in the battery without additives, increasing capacity and maintaining cell integrity. Renaissance Charge offers a full line of products made in the USA for all types and sizes of batteries. Find out why our customers tell us the Renaissance Charger is the only battery charger they will ever use. Save your money. Save the environment. Visit us online at r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com. Or call us at 208-772-4514. That's 208-772-4514. Be a part of the revolution today. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Get in on all the action at forum.theparacast.com. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Our guest is Yari Mikola. He is someone who has photographed, made a lot of photographs, a lot of paranormal experiences, 
possible apparitions, and I suggest you listeners go to thedimensionzone.com, take a look at the photos, and see if they pass muster with you. But maybe we should look into your technical background. So exactly what is your professional background? What qualifies you to even begin to analyze digital images? Well, I've been working in the IT field for the last 35 years. I mean, I started out uh, working on mainframes in uh, basically networking, what was considered networks at the time, uh, which was X400, and then came and, you know, moved into X25, frame relay, et cetera, et cetera, through the ages. This is all um, the stuff that most of our listeners wouldn't understand except for yeah, it's, the concept it's, it's, of mainframe. It was like the foundation for the Internet. Um, and consequently, my travels had taken me all over the place, all over the world. And, and a lot of my clients uh, liked the way that I worked and, and the way that I thought outside the box. And this is what kind of got me involved with the aerospace industry. Um, I got into a an op- software application programming that's called SAP which a lot of your Global 500 companies are now starting to turn to or even versions, you know, from other publishers that are like it. But SAP saturates the market with it about 45 or 48 percent. So there's a lot of demand for, you know, people within that field. And as I traveled, I I happened to to catch in Melbourne, Australia, that there was a course being offered at uh, the university there for forensic uh, analysis of uh, crime scenes. And taking the digital photographs or the photographs that were taken at a crime scene and how to identify what is important in a photograph. And so that kind of got me involved in the investigation aspect of forensics. And then as the the digital age came about, I remember buying my first digital camera. It was, uh, I think, two megapixel and it cost me roughly around $500. You know? Today you get and like that- 15 or 12 or something for about 10 cents. Yeah, I know. It's just amazing. So the thing is, is that that the resolution was was pretty much impeccable at at, at two million pixels. Granted, compared to today's, you know, resolution, it's 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 it was crude. And I should mention, ladies and gentlemen, an iPhone, for example, the latest iPhone, it's five megapixels. And that used to be what you get with a high end camera. So consider how far we've come. Yeah, I mean, just your your camera, your your, your iPhones or in your phones have more resolution, even for video capturing, than granted the lenses aren't that great, but uh, for for storing photos, which make them great because you usually have your phone with you when an event happens. Where were we? Uh, okay, so oh, we were talking about your professional background. Okay, you've gotten into IT work, and you studied forensics. And consequently, while I was traveling, uh, I, I had an offer to work for NASA in doing their security infrastructure. And while I was there, I was I finished the project after two and a half years, and I did their security. I, Is this I like cleared, computer security? I'm talking NASA security for, for computer access. Okay. Okay, and, and I had to go through a high-level security clearance, so I had, you know, basically... I didn't have what the president had, but I had some pretty – I could get into some places where a lot of people couldn't go. And consequently, I, I, I did have access to a lot of, I want to say, confidential information. And in order to be able to secure, you have to talk to people. Well, one of the people that I ended up talking to was the director who handles a lot of the space photography that comes through on the Hubble and also came through on any of the NASA flights. And so we got to chatting and, uh, you know, we, we became friends and he started to show me some tricks about taking a look at photographs. After I finished that scene, I went to work for the Washington Post and uh, I'm thinking my journal, uh, the Washington Post for a few months and then was called back to NASA to help them digitize, actually set up systems for digitizing all their print, video, all their print and film. Now, the objective was uh, to take what they had from these missions that were on, on their, their high-speed cameras and film and convert them to digital imaging. But they needed systems that were large enough to accompany them. And that's where I really got to working with a lot of the analysis team on what they do and how they do it. Granted, I don't have the toys they had, um, but it was interesting to be able to be able to see you know, a, a fly on the back of a camel at uh, 100 miles away. It was just amazing. Now, can you do this nowadays on a basic Mac or PC, or does it still require mainframe power? 
No, as a matter of fact, uh, my laptop computer that I'm talking to you on right now is probably more powerful than uh, one of the crays that I worked on when I was with Lockheed Martin. So it's like, yeah, the, the thing is, is that more computers nowadays are very powerful, especially where you can start getting quad and, you know, the dual and quad processors. So it, it all depends on how much you want to spend on a computer or software to be able to a either create hoaxes or be a forensic analyst. Frankly, I, I don't, you know, I couldn't do it as a living. I do get a lot of photography sent my direction and say, what do you think of this? And a lot of times I can look at it and say, you know, Peridalia almost immediately. And in a lot of cases, I can look at it and say, you know, this has been hoaxed. And in some cases, I have to say, you've got some interesting photos here. Where did it happen and when can I get there? Okay, now let's, before we get to the pace de resistance, the Jerusalem UFO photos and the ones posted on YouTube. Are there any other UFO photos that you've analyzed and posted information about on your site? Yeah, actually, um, all of my clients that I've worked with, uh, I started a project called In the Shadows Paranormal Project. And it's basically as I've been working with different paranormal teams around the world. And I, I do a little training with them. A lot of them are, are, are wannabes to be paranormal investigators. Uh, some of them started out as uh, the weekend, uh, I want to say, ghost hunters. And eventually, you know, developed a passion for it and wanted to know more. So this is where I brought them under the auspices of the In the Shadows Paranormal Project. And during the project, a lot of people send photography. We analyze it and we send it back to them with our responses. And there have been some really good ones have come through, but it is not beyond us to turn around and back out of an investigation if we detect any type of hoaxing. Um, and I want to be clear about that. We set traps with our cameras to verify if anybody's been near them. Uh, and I won't go into that on the radio, um, but anybody who wants to learn what the In the Shadows Paranormal Project does would be glad to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so the other question would be then, if it is so easy to fake, can you do a fake that's very difficult, if not near impossible, to detect as a fake? I think every fake can be detected. It just depends on the skill of the person doing the detection. You know, can I detect every fake? Certainly not. Uh, have I seen some really good fakes? Yeah, I've seen some really good fakes. And I'd say that fourth video is pretty good of the Jerusalem thing. But it's still a fake. And we'll explain that in more detail in our next segment. Yeah. I want to talk in general. Are there any UFO photos on your site, movies, still pictures, anything like that, that you think, you know what, I can't find anything wrong with this. It looks to be genuine. I have yet to find what I would say is a genuine UFO video. Uh, most of the stuff that I've seen has been hoaxed. Most of the stuff is, is either poor photography or someone spotted Jupiter thinking it's a, you know, it's a UFO. And because the camera jitter, it looks like it's moving around. Okay, so obviously we have that stuff, a lot of it. And in our next segment, we're going to look first at the Jerusalem UFO photos how these things get started, how the information spreads, and maybe look at maybe some of the other photos that you have that perhaps have actually passed muster, that things that we can analyze. And as he said, he doesn't claim to be perfect. He doesn't claim to be the best digital imaging or forensic specialist on the planet, so it possible things will get by him, as is true with just about anybody. Our guest this week is Yari Mikola, the site is called the dimensionzone.com still a work in progress in fact i'm giving him some suggestions about how i'd like to see it which he is free to ignore by the way most people are free to ignore anything i say i'm gene steinberg chris o'brien's the co-host you're in the paracast <laughs> Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs. Convert from so many 
formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You can save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code Night Owl. Use the coupon code Night Owl to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L E M K E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L E M K E Soft.com. Becoming a modern smoker is now easier and more cost effective thanks to LeSig. Traditional smokers the world over love LeSig. E cigarettes with a look, feel, and taste of real cigarettes, but without the nasty smoke, ashes, or stains. LeSig is powered by revolutionary microelectronic technology. A small rechargeable battery and unique replaceable cartridge provide all the satisfaction and benefits of smoking without the smoke and all the hazards. See the large variety of LeSig e cigarette supplies and accessories at LeSig.com. That's L E C I. LeSig.com. LeSig is competitively priced, comes with the best customer service, a 30-day warranty, and satisfaction guaranteed. What a great gift idea. For a 10% discount, mention GCN when you call 870-518-4307. That's 870-518-4307. Ask for fast, free, same-day shipping. Order online at LeSig.com and use promo code GCN at checkout. That's L-E-C-I-G.com. LeSig for today's modern smoker. Hi, I'm Mark Craighead, founder of Crossbreed Holsters. I designed our top-selling holster, the Super Tuck Deluxe, to solve the problems of being poked, pinched, and gouged while carrying concealed. The Super Tuck Deluxe is the most comfortable, most concealable holster on the market today. We offer a two-week free trial and a lifetime warranty. Visit us at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Don't forget, CrossbreedHolsters.com. If you're serious about playing college football, give yourself the competitive edge with the National Underclassmen Football Combine. The NUC is the longest-running underclassmen event and the most respected combine and football camp in the nation, specifically designed to give athletes early recruiting exposure. There's no better time than now to compete in the National Underclassmen Football Combine. Call 888-NUC-MVP1 or go to nationalunderclassmen.com to find out more. If you owe the IRS money you can't pay, then listen carefully because you already know that the problem won't go away by itself. You can get help today from the leading tax expert in the country, Dan Pilla. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. The IRS isn't going to just forget about you. Right now, the IRS is hiring thousands of tax collectors to go after delinquent accounts just like yours. That's why you need to take action today, and I can help. I take a simple but proven approach to solving your tax debt problem. First, I stabilize collections so you don't have to worry about wage and bank levies. Next, I build a detailed plan to get your debt reduced to the fullest extent possible, sometimes even eliminated. Finally, I work with you every step of the way to get your problem solved once and for all. So call now for a free consultation. Call 1-800-346-6829. Dan Pilla will solve your tax problem guaranteed. He's helped thousands of people, and he can help you too. Call us today at 800-346-6829. That's 800-34-NO-TAX. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. You're in the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. Our guest this week, Yari Mikola. The site is called The Dimension Zone. Dimension Zone, thedimensionzone.com. That's thedimensionzone.com. And I suggest, Yari, you register all the alternatives. So, like, for example, we have theparacast.com, paracast.com, paracast.net, and 12 other variations so people can make a mistake and still find us or someone else can't take that site and say, that they are us. The dimensionzone.com and, and the dimensionzone.net. Uh, also, ITSPP for In the Shadows Paranormal Project, or you can spell it out in the Shadows Paranormal Project.com. Uh, I also have a site planned for Spirits and Shadows, which is basically going to be a uh, posting site where people can post their photography and their videos of uh, the paranormal. And uh, let users like your uh, your team on podcast turn around and, and critique. Now, we should mention here that those who visit the Paracast forums at forum.paracast.com will realize that I suck Yari into becoming a participant. 
You know, I do that to people. I get them sucked in. Suddenly they become addicted. And the reason is, is because these photos appeared on YouTube showing alleged UFOs over Jerusalem. And what's significant is that this all happens at the same time we have the crisis in Egypt. And we worry about what's happening in the Middle East, how it affects Israel. So maybe it's a politically correct or incorrect UFO. What do you know about these photos posted on YouTube? Myself? Other than that? Uh, that's the only place I've really seen them anywhere is YouTube and Google Video. Uh, there's been a few, you know, they've been reposted on uh, Yahoo, but for the most part, they're all in FLV format and they're all up there for, to be seen. I did see a video from a newscast from Fox News where they picked up the story. Uh, I think it was with the second or even the third video that came out. Uh, and declared it as pretty much uh, looks like we're having visitors. Nothing really concrete and nothing really substantial, and I certainly haven't heard any comments from any presidents, uh, you know, around the world. So how real can it be? Granted, we have been hoaxed and lied to before, not only by others, but by the governments themselves. Well, okay, let's look at these films here. Okay, anybody can post anything on YouTube. If it becomes compelling enough, it becomes viral, which means hundreds of thousands or millions of people will download or just view that video. That doesn't mm -hmm. prove anything. Is there any sighting report available anywhere that you've heard about that confirms these sightings? I checked with MUFON, and I haven't uh, been able to find any reports with MUFON, and uh, I haven't gotten my call back from uh, Colorado to determine whether they've actually taken one in, in Israel. Uh, the thing is, is that there are MUFON agents or, or representatives or investigators uh, just about in every corner of the world, but nothing. Well, of course, the other problem, of course, is I guess you've read this. MUFON is under a great deal of a cloud now, a lot of controversy over dismissal of state directors, what they did with that money from Robert Bigelow and all that. So we wonder what kind of resources they would have to mount an investigation from a remote corner of the world, even if they have people there. Well, you know, one thing that I, when in dealing with MUFON in the past, um, they had some really good concepts about the training that they would go through for identifying UFOs and taking reports and investigating. And I've actually lost a lot of faith with them, especially when I worked for a company in Colorado while I was living there uh, here about uh, 10 years ago. And I, I don't know, it's just like they lost their clout in politics uh, because everybody was fighting and vying for positions within MUFON. And I don't think that they have the clout that they once had, uh, which is why a colleague and I had started Paranexus. And uh, again, Paranexus went off on a vector that uh, he and I disagreed, so I left that. It's not beyond me to leave when I feel that something either dishonest, uh, credibility is in question, or just a change of, of, of opinion. I mean, I learn constantly. I remember when I used to think orbs were ghosts. You know, and that was because we were really just learning digital cameras. And then the, the um, of course, the anomalies that happen with digital photography, especially with contaminations. So the thing is, is that we all change our opinion when the evidence is before us. I haven't been able to find any concrete evidence on this, nor have I gotten any responses from any of the people that I tried contacting on them. So basically, right now, there are no reports of UFO sightings. All you have are these movies on YouTube. Exactly. Okay, knowing that, okay, knowing that, let's take a look at what these things are. What did you determine? Maybe you could describe your analysis, how you went about it, and what the results were. Well, just like uh, another member on the team, uh, on the uh, Paracast, uh, podcast team, find out that is that we have... Uh, a guy by the name of Video Hoaxer, who actually has some pretty good videos, and I did, uh, you know, get permission from him to post them on our website, that he talked about what he had done in the analysis. Uh, and, and basically, it's nothing different than I had started, because the first part of the, uh, of the article on the web is pretty much stuff that I had started until I found his videos when I was looking for additional evidence. So, but the thing is, is that first thing I looked at was perspective, and to see if there's been any uh, masking going on where you, or layering where you can actually overlay two or three images on top of each other. This is a trick that Hollywood has used for a long time where, you know, you see the picture of a castle 
and which is an obvious painting, and then riders coming up on a cliffside headed towards the castle uh, that doesn't really exist because it's a painting. What they would do is they would mask out a portion of the of the screen, and then film the riders, probably riding in some uh, ranch house. Uh, what, what do you call it? Where, the, where these guys go out on cowboy weekends, and then headed towards the castle. Um, and then they would put the two together, and then you would see the riders approaching the castle. Well, now with the advent of, of digital photography and digital uh, uh, manipulation, especially with companies, Star Wars. I mean, come on, Star Wars was brilliant. But if you look at the, the first runs of Star Wars, you can see all the mistakes. <laughs> well, then so they the didn't have digital photography. They were using models, weren't they? They were using what? They were using models for the most part in Star Wars. They and were using moving models, cameras but then they and were stuff like that. You, sure. There was some digital, digital works with uh, the company that they started specifically for the special effects. Um, and a lot of it was more along the lines of, of uh, Cray computer type graphics. So, you know, remember Tron came out, what, back in the 70s, maybe 80s? Yeah, 1980. Yeah, so the thing is, is that Tron was just ahead of its time, but again, it used uh, Disney Magic for that. Well, one thing, too, of course, there was actually a movie that came out some years later called The Last Starfighter. And it's not a classic, you know, it's not a classic movie. I but think it's, it's one, one of my the favorites. <laughs> it's one of the last movies that Robert Preston appeared in, okay? The late Robert Preston. And, you know, he was kind of channeling some of his characters from his other movies. They used all computerized animation to make those special effects. And that thing was great compared to what you see today. They look kind of cheesy, but, you know, for the late 70s and early 80s, they look pretty decent. Yeah, it was a good film. You know, there's a lot of really good films today that take advantage of, of digital magic. Uh, and, and the thing is, is that we ourselves, for the laptops, our Macs, our, our Linux, our Windows, really don't have... I want to say, first of all, you have to be an artist to be able to create something like this. And you have to understand the laws of physics when you're doing that. One of the first things that I did or noticed right off the bat was when the zoom, say on this, on this uh, Jerusalem video, went in, I automatically noticed that the light of the UFO did not change in perspective to the other lights around the city. So the people who did this didn't understand lighting and the significance the significance of, of video on or lights on a video, night vision. So, or I'm saying not night vision, but but nighttime shots. For example, I'm looking over the city of, of The Hague right now here in the Netherlands, and I can see lights probably about five five kilometers away, about three miles. If I were to take my video camera and zoom into those, they get sharper, but they don't get larger. So the thing is, is that's the perspective that you notice is that on a video camera, they look blurry when you're when you're zoomed out, and they pinpoint to a nice sharp pinpoint of light as you zoom in. That didn't happen on these videos with the UFO specifically. Um, also, you know, I, I use a lot of uh, uh, light analysis, and what I'll do is I'll freeze frame in an FLV freeze frame. I mean, it's a copy of a copy of a copy. Um, so, and I try to determine whether the pixelization, uh, and it was really hard with the FOV, that didn't really work well with that. It does work well with digital photographs and when you have the original video. I'll tell you why we've got a split for a quick break here. So we have Yari Mikola, and he has a site called The Dimension Zone, thedimensionzone.com. We're talking about his analysis of those YouTube videos, UFOs over Jerusalem, or just special effects. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in The Paracast. Hi, Ted Anderson announcing a great way to listen to radio on the telephone. By calling 760-569-7700... You'll be hearing GCNlive.com programs in seconds. Come to GCNlive.com, find your favorite host's dedicated phone number, and hear them 24-7. You heard me right, every show has a dedicated phone number. Stop by GCNlive.com and bookmark their number today. And again, that's 760-569-7700. 
We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We return. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. Our guest is Yari Mikola. The site is The Dimension Zone. His magazine or publication online is The Journal of Anomalous Sciences. To backtrack as we get to the middle section of the show, these viral videos at YouTube, UFOs over Jerusalem, he got a look at them, and we were talking about pixelization. What does that mean to the end user, the normal person who says, what's he talking about? Pixels, this, pixels, that. What does that mean? Well, we were talking earlier about cameras at two megapixels. That's two million pictures for a certain perspective of a, of, a, of a picture size. So in other words, two million pictures would get you like a three by five picture with clarity if you were printing it out on, on, uh, on photo paper. Whereas with the new cameras now where you have eight megapixel, 10 megapixel, 12 megapixel, you could print it out on a wall poster and it would be crystal clear. Um, so to give you an idea of the pixelization, that's what, what pixels are. It's a series of dots that we see and for those of us that have actually looked, you know, I remember as a kid with my silly putty being able to put it on the Sunday comics and then be able to stretch it out and see all the dots that made up uh, Batman. You know, I thought that was really cool. I didn't know that those were dots. Look at that. <laughs> well, that's what so you're Batman looking at. So Batman and Superman are just a bunch of dots. All those superheroes. That's it. Sure. That's all it is. Photographs in the newspaper. That's all they are. Dots. Oh, who could have thunk it? And, and it's no different, really, with, with digital, the digital age, with a series of dots, millions of them. Now, in, when computers first came out, to get up to, uh, I think it was eight colors, four colors was the primary uh, palette. Now we can get, you know, millions of colors. Now we can get millions of colors. And the thing is, is with the, the, the different color palettes, when you start merging two, two, two photographs, in this case, I'll use a photograph because it's the same principle with, with video. And you have one that is taken with the camera that has a different palette because you've taken it at a different location. So it, it bases the palette around that object that you photographed. And you take another picture with a different color palette and a different pixelization, uh, total number of pixels, and merge them together. It's like trying to take cinder blocks and put them into a, a red brick building. They just don't look right. And consequently, when you get down to the level where you can zoom into those pixels, it's when you see that the colors aren't right. Programs like Photoshop will actually try to blend those colors together and will try to recreate a smoothing palette to, to overlap them, to hide them a little bit better. So these are the kind of things that we look for is, is the photograph look like it's been manipulated at all by first looking at color palettes. Then we'll look at the pixelization to see if the squares match. Now when you get down to the video level, not only can you, can you bring in motion into a frame by frame video with programs like Movie Magics, or, you know, there's, there's tons of them out there, but I think Magix is probably the least expensive for what it does. That's less than 100 bucks, and everybody can afford that at one time or another. And the thing is, is you can take the 30 frames per second, and then you can turn around and, and add your own overlays. This is how television programs bring in the smoke and the fire and the introduction of a big sale or whatever onto the screen. Well, they, it wasn't there when they photographed it. Uh, so it's overlaying these videos on top of each other and then filming them as one. Another thing that you look at is the number of frames per shot. For example, H.264, I have a high-definition camera from Sony that I can set the, the frame rate is up to 64 frames per second. 
Now, when you start getting anything faster than that, we really can't detect solid. Uh, for example, a, f a fluorescent light oscillates at 60 cycles per second. It doesn't look like it's flickering, but it is. So the thing is, is 30, 30 frames per second is pretty much the average for video. In some cases, when you convert that, it drops it to 29 or 28 frames, or even M M4P or, or any of the other format, MOV. It'll alter the pixel palette. It'll alter the frame resolution. And it will alter a tracking that actually overlays the sound with the video. So it's like these little white lines on a black edge, very much like if you've looked at film negatives for 35 millimeter, you notice the little numbers on the bottom and the little hash marks. Those are markers that identify that film and, and verify that this film had this image at this location. The same thing with uh, digital film. Okay, now the uh, big question I have before we go on is, are you able to manipulate the pixels and all these other elements to basically make it almost seamless, almost impossible to detect the fakery? You can get really close, but it takes a lot of work because it's almost a frame-by-frame frame piece of work. Remember the old black and whites that everybody was colorizing? Those were done by computers, and guess what? They all had to be done frame-by-frame. Frame. That's why on the first attempts of colorizing a black and white into quote-unquote technicolor, the palette was less than 250 colors. So it didn't look Gosh. very good, and of course I've seen the efforts where they used to make to take black and white movies and colorize them, make them color, and you know, they all look dreadful. Yeah, and that's the same thing with when you attempt to do a frame-by-frame -frame adjustment by, by moving motion in. Now, the program that, that I actually uh, uh, have uh, used in the past, and I, I actually have just upgraded to the new one. I haven't loaded it yet, but it's the Adobe Photo Editor or After Effects is what it's called. And the thing is, is that it allows you to actually add, and this is the one that, that uh, the video hoaxer pointed out, how he showed how he created the light array. And what it does is this, it, it takes, for example, the orb coming down, and you can expand the light field on it to, to reflect on the ground beneath it or all on objects around it. And the Adobe program will actually adjust the pixels where would that light would fall based on the light schematics that are already in the photograph. But you're telling me here that these photos of the UFOs over Jerusalem, these movies, don't have the proper lighting, right? They don't have the proper lighting. And, and, and the one where I highlighted on the web page where you can see the mask around the orb above the dome, you know, there's a white edge around it. That could have been done by one of two things. That could have been done by poor masking, which is my high suspicion, before it was turned into an FLV. Now, we have to explain. Masking is just like covering up something so you can put something else about on top of it, right? Right. For example, if I want to uh, take your face and put it on a, on a, on a body like, um, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They've Not done that, I think. Body today. Yeah. Pardon? Mm -hmm. They've done that, I think. They've got me on wearing suits. They've got pictures of me doing all sorts of different things and sometimes doing things we don't want to mention. Well, you know, the thing is, is nowadays with, with, with digital wizardry, you can make that look like it really is you. And, and this is why the digital forensics are such a big, I want to say, industry or business in the court systems. You know, this is why police forces have digital analysts to be able to determine if a photograph is authentic or not. You know, remember in the old days when they used to show a spy from Russia, you know, walking in the streets of Manhattan. And it was obviously something that was cut and pasted from him, him marching in the Kremlin to marching down Fifth Avenue. And, and they, were, they were crude at best. You, know, you look at that as like National Enquirer. <laughs> Hello, look, yeah, the Kremlin. Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't happen today. But there are nuances and hints that will tell you whether it doesn't fit. Now, there's actually a picture of Time magazine where you see Ronald Reagan and President Obama at their peak of their activity. So you see Reagan maybe in his late 60s or 70s, which is, what, 30 years ago? Because mm -hmm. this is his 100th anniversary of his birth. And then you see Obama in his late 40s, 
And it's all just simple digital stuff that anyone can do. You can take anybody, put them into any surrounding, and make it look, well, almost genuine, maybe not, maybe if we apply the proper forensics. And we'll get into that. And I know Chris has some questions about the process and what your results are. We're talking with Yari Mikola. The site is The Dimension Zone, thedimensionzone.com. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. Have you been sitting on a few great domain name ideas but haven't locked them in for yourself? Good. Now you can buy them through the number one domain name registrar, Namecheap.com, as voted by the top tech blog Lifehacker. Just like the name says, you can buy domains cheap, as low as $2.99. And every new domain comes with WhoisGuard, our special privacy service, free for the first year. Now that you know, it's time to grab those domain names before someone else does. Namecheap.com. Go now. Namecheap.com. Fate Magazine provides true reports of the strange and unknown. Keep up with the latest on angels and miracles, psychic phenomena, ghosts, UFOs, life after death, and much, much more. To receive your free issue of Fate Magazine, call now at 1-800-728-2730 or visit their website at www.fatemag.com. That's 1-800-728-2730. What are you waiting for? Your fate awaits. Are you wondering about your retirement portfolio? Are you confident that the financial advisor is experienced enough to combat climbing interest rates, taxes, and inflation? Stop guessing and go to the expert, Robert Chapman of the International Forecaster. When you subscribe to the International Forecaster, you get Robert Chapman's 45 years of experience and concise investment recommendations. Who needs sugar-coated excuses when you can get the cold hard facts and proven investment leads you can't get anywhere else? For a free introductory copy to Robert Chapman's International Forecaster, subscribe now at theinternationalforecaster.com or call 877-479-8178. Experience the difference. When you subscribe, you can email Robert Chapman directly to obtain investment advice tailored just for you. Don't wait another minute. Subscribe today at theinternationalforecaster.com or call 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. This message starts with a great offer from Big Berkey Water Filters because we don't want you drinking dangerous water one minute longer. Right now, purchase any filter system from BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com to get your choice of two Berkey Sport Bottles, a KDF shower filter, a set of fluoride filters, or our new sight glass spigot absolutely free. Why do this? Because over 60% of municipal water is fluoridated, and at less than two cents per gallon, Berkey Water Filters purify both treated and untreated water, removing dangerous chlorine, fluoride, and other contaminants. Big Berkey water filters are powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water, so they're perfect for rainwater collection systems and emergency preparedness. Remember, Big Berkey includes free shipping on every order over $50, and GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit B-I-G-B-E-R-K-E-Y waterfilters.com or call 877-99-BERKEY. That's Big Berkey waterfilters.com or call today 1-877-99-BERKEY. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. 
And if you want to catch up on past episodes, we have hundreds of shows for you to download direct from theparacast.com. That's theparacast.com. Or check us out on iTunes. Return with us now with Hiari Mikola at the dimensionzone.com, his site with all sorts of sections about the paranormal and UFOs. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. And, of course, we're dissecting these movies on YouTube that appear to depict UFOs over Jerusalem and Israel, but maybe not so. Chris, you had some questions. Well, I, I, first of all, I have an observation, Yari. Uh, looking at these uh, videos on YouTube, and one thing I noticed is it looks like the the actual background that shows Jerusalem at night appears to be a static image. Uh, I don't see any indications of moving lights, any lights twinkling or blinking. And it seems to me that this has all been done over a static image. Uh, did you look into that aspect of the footage? Yeah, actually, in, on the, it was from the third video. I did a close-up, and you can actually see so the scan lines from a television. And it, it looks very much like it was a, a still frame that they then put the video over the top of and then filmed the still, still frame through each frame. Um, that was my comment, is that, you know, here it is from a video freeze frame. The fourth video actually does show street lights, actually cars moving or what appears to be cars moving. You can't see the car, but you can see the lights. Now, one of the questions that I have is if the car is moving away from me, then why do I see the headlights? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it going down the street, and then it comes into a zoom, you know, where it, where it goes over the top of the highway, so to speak. So it was very a short section within the first part of the video. The thing is, is these lights, when it goes behind some buildings and comes out and the headlights are, are moving away from you, you still see the headlights. You don't see the taillights of the car. You just see the headlights. So that was one of the first clues that that was probably either a dot added in to make it look like movement with a couple black dots behind it to make it look like a car, or that was a, another layer of a mask but that was the only section is the street in the foreground that actually shows any movement of cars. The rest of it did look like it was freeze framed. Also, in the far horizon, there is nothing. And if you look at a daytime picture of that same scene, you'll see that there's mountains and there are uh, radio towers in the background or something should have been showing up. Airplanes, whatever, hillsides. But it seems like it's been blacked out. Hmm. Kind of like well, NASA's photographs of the moon, where there's no stars in the background. Right. Well, that could be that could be an aperture setting. Um, that could be another set, and that could be another show. <laughs> yeah, that could be a whole 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 another show. W one thing that that has puzzled me about this is, uh, you know, Gene had, had obviously uh, indicated the timing of this, uh, the release of this particular, uh, quite a complicated uh, hoax. If if it is determined to be a hoax, which I, I suspect it is, and I think you're presenting some pretty uh, compelling evidence to suggest that it was a hoax. But this brings the level and sophistication of hoaxing to, to a new level with the, the subsequent layering on of, of additional footage. And this indicates to me uh, that we're not dealing with your average hoaxer, that this may be some sort of uh, more elaborate uh, plan. And when you, when you, tie the footage release in with the events that are happening next door or <laughs> on the block there in Egypt, it, it does bring in some pretty compelling uh, angles on why this was released when it was and, and the sophistication and the, the, the amount of work that obviously went into this also uh, I, I find very intriguing and uh, the whole political cultural aspects of this I, I think are something that needs to be addressed as well. Well, as far as the politics, I really don't see how a UFO in Israel could affect the elections in Egypt and all of the, the hoopla that's going on over there right now as, as far as politically. I mean, okay, a UFO appears the, you know, in, in, each, in, in Israel. But on the other hand, I think that a lot of the information that's being leaked out, if you will, is information so that we won't panic when something really does happen. So when something does happen... Um, in the near future, you know, 2012 is coming up. People talk about that all the time. What I think is going to happen, I think you throw the old calendar in the way and get a new one. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I do think that there might be some 
geological shifting that might take place, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes coming up only because we're going through a, a north-south polar change of the galaxy. Uh, however, when it, getting back to what we were just talking about, like I can get off on tangents. You guys just have to drag me back. Well, well hold on. You said a north-south polar change uh, for the galaxy, or are you talking about the planetary uh, well, magnetic well, field no, shifting? The, the whole solar system is going through the, 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 through the galactic plane in 2012. We're, we're well into it. And, and what is your evidence or background to say that? Well, uh, I'm, first of all, I'm an astro- astronomer at heart. I have polished my own mirrors. I watched the night sky since I was a kid. But yeah, we are actually traveling through the flat edge of the galactic plane. We do that every thirty-five or twenty-five thousand years. You know, go up one side, down the other, back, back through the. This is a plate where we're spinning around. We're going through it and then coming out the other side, in in a in a hyperbolic curve, sound wave. So it's, it's like the galactic equator is what you're talking about. Yeah, we're going through the galactic ecliptic. equator. And so you, if you figure we're taking our North Pole and it's going to be hit, it's currently, you know, pointed to the South Pole. And when we get it on the other side, it's going to be South Pole to South Pole. We're going to flip it around. You know, theoretically speaking, I, I, we've not seen it in, in humankind, so we don't know for sure what's going to happen. But anyway, that's a whole other story. This is the kind of stuff that the Dimension Zone covers, by the way, guys. Okay, but let's uh, get back to the pictures let's, let's here. So, okay, so now there have been some conflicting analyses. One suggesting that maybe at least one of these photos, a fourth photo was genuine, a fourth film. Now, looking at all these videos, are there four of them? I thought there were three. There's a fourth one, and the fourth one that came out is basically showing a bunch of, uh, and it's on your, it's it's on the on the forum chat. Uh, these I want to say these guys chatting in a car, and uh, then at the very end, it's, there's a, a blank space, and then it goes to the video of of the the UFO over the dome, um, and. I was told by one of the postings that it was originally an MP4, M4P, and all I could find was FLV. Even in, from the link he gave me, it's only available in FLV 480 pixels. Now, we have to explain something here, and one of the problems in analyzing this, these videos are very low resolution. So there's a lot of yes. noise, a lot of artifacts and things that you wouldn't see if you had high-quality original. Is there a high-quality original? Does anyone know? I haven't been able to find any. Yeah, but, you know, I let me that's... explain a little bit about the, the process. If I yeah, have YouTube, film, YouTube compression. YouTube compression yeah, is really adding YouTube's to YouTube's compression. Exactly. And the thing is, is what they want to do is they want to squeeze it down like a zip file so it doesn't take up so much space. And they give it the FLV format so, so it actually can be read by FLV players. And that's for instant play. That's why it starts up right away when you start a video online. Uh, DivX takes a little while to download uh, the first uh, few seconds while it buffers the you know a few few minutes of film before it begins, and in some cases an MOV file or an AVI needs to to get going or be completely downloaded before you can view it. I'll tell you what we'll get so, into more of the techniques in the background of this in a moment. We have Yari Mikola of the Dimension Zone. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then, a coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack! Attack! Of the Rockwells. The former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes, The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack, Attack of the Rockoids is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Attack, Attack of the Rockwell, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition.
If you own a septic system or if you're facing costly septic system replacement, this message is for you. When you want to stop paying for pump outs and avoid backups, when you've had enough of the foul odors and costly repairs, use BioSafe One Septic Solution. Now there's an easy to use 100% guaranteed answer to all your septic system problems. BioSafe One Septic Solution. BioSafe One is patented and made specifically for all septic systems and made by the same team of scientists who help clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill. BioSafe One decontaminates and removes sludge, stops costly pump outs and repairs and remove septic system stench all with a 100% success rate see what gives biosafe one septic solution the advantage over any other septic product at biosafe1.com that's b i o s a f e o n e.com biosafe1.com or call toll free 1-866-424-6663 that's 1-866-424-6663 biosafe one the guaranteed biofriendly money saving way to clean your septic system Where have all the military surplus stores gone? Don't worry, you don't need one. Because everything you need at Military Surplus is at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com, one of the last surviving true military surplus stores in the country. Go online now to MainMilitary.com and discover a source for hard-to-find surplus items at true surplus prices. Surplus gun cleaning kits as low as $2.99. Complete chemical suits as low as $11.99. See our huge selection of gas masks, filters, and accessories. Finish and M10 gas masks are three for $30, and Swiss filters are three for $12. Searching for Strike Anywhere matches? MainMilitary.com has them, plus a whole new product line of survival and first aid kits and lots more. Get free shipping on orders over $50 only at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com. Or call 877-608-0179, 877-608-0179. MainMilitary.com, the main name in military supply. At HempUSA.org, we offer chemical-free products to people around the world, detoxifying, self-healing while rebuilding the immune system. We urge our listeners to please consider our largest selling product, MicroPlant Powder. Our microplant powder is rich in silica and probiotics to help rebuild the immune system and to create a healthy stomach flora. Microplant powder is excellent for daily intake and is perfect to add to your storage shelter. We urge our listeners to please visit us at hempusa.org. And remember, all of our products are chemical-free and healthy to eat. We constantly strive to give you the best service, highest quality, and rapid shipping anywhere. And we offer free shipping on orders over $95 in the U.S. Please visit us at hempusa.org or call 908-691-2608. That's 908-691-2608. See what our powder, seeds, and oil can do for you at hempusa.org. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. This is Jacques Vallée. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We have Yari Mikola, and he has a site called thedimensionzone.com. All sorts of interesting paranormal information, and we're dissecting these films of purported UFOs over Jerusalem. We're talking about the fourth film here, and we're explaining why you know, low resolution may be a problem, especially in trying to analyze something, because doesn't that also mask the defects or at least the tampering? It can. It can, because it makes them less detectable. Because as I said earlier, when you're looking at digital filming, there's actually tracking lines in the digital frame by frame that that aligns each frame to, say, the 29 or 30 frames per second and matches it with the audio. You've you've seen DivX films, for example, that the sound was off. That's because it didn't match the soundtrack with the video track. And so there are tracks on a digital formatted film that need to be there. And they can be viewed with certain software to determine if they're misaligned or if they've been spliced at any point, which is why I requested the original format of the copy. So in other words, I'm never going to get the original unless they send me the, the um, flash memory, you know, from it. Uh, and I have had people send me their flash memory, say, we didn't erase it, here it is, okay? I, I can only tell or, or guess whether it is the flash memory unless I was there and I took it from the camera. But the thing is, is that if I have an original, then I can actually go back and take a look at this tracking. 
when you copy, let's say I have a, a, an H.264 high-definition Sony, and I want to put it on the web. Okay, this is a Sony high-definition camcorder, right? High-definition camcorder, and it's got the night vision, which is why I got it. The difficulty is, is that I have to convert it two times, once as an AVI and then into an FLV or a DivX. And every time you do this, you lose something in the translation. You lose a degradation. You know, I, I remember a friend showing me a picture that he, he had done of uh, Hillary for the magazine Bazaar, Harper's Bazaar. It was a while back, I guess back about 19, I want to say 1999, maybe 2003, somewhere in there. But this was when JPEGs was really the only way to, to go. And he showed me how bad these pixelizations were. But it, it's, here's Hillary with her blouse open, actually her dress is open. You can see some serious cleavage going on. And you know that that face does not belong to that body. Uh, so the thing is, is, it was, is all about, he says, look at this fake, and it's appeared on a magazine. My question is, is how many people are going to believe it, even though there's some edges that are blurry on it? And the same thing holds true when you start looking at the FLVs that are replicated and replicated and replicated. Each time you copy it, it loses a percentage of that resolution. So it becomes more, I want to say, discombobulated. Those pixels do not line up anymore. Discombobulated uh, is, of course, a technical term, very highly technical. And it's like a thingamabob and a, whatchamacallit. But yeah, so, so the, the pixels don't line up anymore because they never did in the first place. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also, you know, people think, oh, it's digital. You don't have any generational loss. But you actually do. And it creates a more diffuse kind of fuzziness uh, to, the, to the image. And add that to uh, compression like you see uh, at YouTube where they really squash the footage to create space. You do have – it makes it more difficult to detect some of the shenanigan uh, post-production work that's done on these things. But it's, it's still possible to detect. Well, you know, it's like, for example, do you think that the Washington uh, uh, Post was posting original photographs that were taken right off the camera and put into the paper? Hell no. No. <laughs> they doctor them. They smooth them out. They get rid of things that are unimportant in the photograph. They overlay a good image of the sky behind a bad image of a sky. You know, as, as, or above the bad image of the sky. And, and what they're doing is they're cleaning it up so it's ready for print. It can draw the attention to the individual or the section of the photograph that they want you to see. A lot of times when you see a background, a background blurred in a sport, you know, say Sports Illustrated, that wasn't done by the camera. That was done by manipulation with programs like Adobe Photoshop. What they do is they mask the, the, the football player just as he's about to kick that, that field goal that wins. By the way, who won the world? <laughs> uh, I, I don't get the uh, Super the Packers. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. And and by the way, the, just for political experts or junkies, <laughs> the Green Bay Packers are owned, I guess, by the city of Green Bay. So it means the people of Green Bay own the Packers. Therefore, it's a socialist <laughs> yeah. <Team>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the only the is, only team owned by the by the people, uh, the fans, and and also by it's people, by far the, the smallest uh, city with a football professional football team. Huh. But you know, uh, it's it's like you see this football players perfect shot, backgrounds blurry. You just see the player kicking the ball. Well, that was taken with a telephoto camera that did not get a blurred background because it was taken too far away. So they have to blur the background before they print it. So photographs have been manipulated for years. And the thing is, is now we have to detect what the truth is in this photography. You know, just look at any woman's magazine with a good-looking uh, lady on the cover. The amount of retouching and photoshopping and that goes into some of those photographs uh, is is really unbelievable. I've I've actually done uh, a few retouching jobs where I took a um, you know a, a, a pretty nice-looking lady, but she was in her early 60s, and I was able to take about 20 years off of her just by going in and manipulating uh, you know small groups of pixels to take away uh, wrinkles to tighten up her chin, you know. And, and I literally made her look 30 years younger. And I'll tell you, she, she really liked that. You know, it was for the cover of her DVD exercise video. So Especially now in the era of high-definition video and high-definition television, what they do, of course, is the stars go on there. They don't want to see all the pimples and the things in their face that show that they're real people. So they wear special makeup. They use special mm -hmm. filters on the camera to diffuse the defects. Exactly. It's a world where we can't believe anything we see anymore. 
you know, yeah. so this is where, why I want to take an analysis. I mean, take, for example, the World Trade Center. You cannot find any original videos anywhere except the ones that are on, on YouTube. And those are so badly degraded with replication and copies. And the ones that made anything are now gone. I don't know whether it was taken away because the government took them off. They didn't want them there. But, you know, I was looking at, at one, for example, freeze frame of one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center. And it wasn't a commercial airline. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was not a commercial airline. Yeah, you're that's, talking that's to a whole somebody show right there. Yeah. You're talking to somebody who's flown his whole life. I've got more sky miles than many pilots do. And the thing is, is that I looked at that and I'm thinking, something's up. So a conspiracy theory, yeah, that's another show. This is the kind, of, again, the stuff that the Dimension Zone covers. But the thing is, is that when you start looking at manipulation, I would love nothing better than to see an authentic video of UFOs. I would like to see little gray men walking down the White House lawn, you know, next to, to the president and his, his daughters and his, his wife and shaking hands with the press. And until that happens, you know, I don't know that we'll ever get an authentic video from anybody unless it's actually a, a major event. Well, it's, it, this is really the advent of the digital age has made it much more problematic and complicated to actually be able to filter out with an untrained eye uh, some of the uh, very increasingly well done hoaxes that are going on. And, and I think the further we get into the digital age, the percentage of real UFO films and videos and photos is going to go down as the amount of hoaxes and fakes and manipulated images uh, starts going towards the roof. I, I pretty much, if it, if it appears on YouTube, and uh, it, it, chances are it's a hoax, at least this is my way of thinking now. And one of the things that I also look at is the reaction of the individuals that are shown in the frame. I listen to the soundtrack. I listen to the quality of the voice. And oftentimes the, the hoaxes are instantly betrayed by bad acting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like the, the one where the, where the wall is obviously a layer. The guy standing by the wall and watching him just stand still and or just kind of looking like nothing really happened when this UFO comes down and then zips off. You know what? We'll like, get okay. into more of reaction shots, which we see, of course, you know, on the bridge of the Star Trek Enterprise. You know, you have yeah. to see all this alien stuff going on and you're being attacked and you got to spin the warp eight to avoid the Klingons <laughs> and your shields are down. But, you know, that's good acting reaction shots. We're talking to Yari Mikola of the Dimension Zone. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number, 1-877-804-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV. 1-877-804-MY-TV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-877-804-MY-TV. 1-877-804-MY-TV. Hi, I'm Don Wiskin, and have you ever wondered what the garlic cayenne drops could do for you? February is Heart Month, and we want you to find out just what can happen when you take the right combination of herbs designed to maintain our cardiovascular health. Purchase a four-month supply of Extendivite drops or capsules, plus get a bonus month supply of capsules for only $125 plus shipping. That's five months' worth of Extendivite for $25 per month. This is a Heart Month special to help get you started on your path to better health and ends February 28th. So don't be left out. Find out what Extendivite can do for you. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 
877-928-8822 or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Hi, I'm Mark Craighead, founder of Crossbreed Holsters. I designed our top-selling holster, the Super Tuck Deluxe, to solve the problems of being poked, pinched, and gouged while carrying concealed. The Super Tuck Deluxe is the most comfortable, most concealable holster on the market today. We offer a two-week free trial and a lifetime warranty. Visit us at crossbreedholsters.com. Don't forget crossbreedholsters.com If you're serious about playing college football, give yourself the competitive edge with the National Underclassmen Football Combine. The NUC is the longest running underclassmen event and the most respected combine and football camp in the nation. Specifically designed to give athletes early recruiting exposure. There's no better time than now to compete in the National Underclassmen Football Combine. Call 888-NUC-MVP1 or go to nationalunderclassmen.com to find out more. Most of us eat a blend of processed, man-made, and all-natural food. But the food you eat may not provide all the nutrition your body needs. We now know that liquid vitamin supplements are absorbed faster than pills. That's why you need Sea Energy. From AffinitySeaEnergy.com Sea vegetation is known to be the richest source of organic minerals, and that's what you'll find in all-natural, great-tasting Sea Energy. Sea Energy contains aloe vera, black cherry, cranberry, and pomegranate juices, plus ginseng, cat's claw, ginger, ginkgo biloba, and over 50 trace minerals needed for healthy metabolism, all from natural organic sea plant sources. Get a 10% discount by using promo code GCN at checkout when you order Sea Energy from AffinitySeaEnergy.com. Call 855-732-3637. That's 855-732-3637. Or go to AffinitySEAEnergy.com today. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. You're in the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. We return. Yari Mikola is our guest. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Chris, why don't we continue on this journey towards possibly fake UFO film? Well, as, as someone that's very interested in getting out and, and interviewing people and looking them in the eye, getting their, their stories firsthand, gauging their, you know, their body language, uh, the inflection, the tone, the way they describe certain things. It's, it's pretty easy to determine when somebody is making something up, when somebody is confabulating, when somebody is, is uh, sort of not being totally truthful. And uh, I think one of the things that really comes through loud and clear on, on many of these uh, YouTube videos that you're seeing of UFOs and, and related phenomena is that the people that are involved in the hoax are not actors. And they're trying to be actors, and it's pretty apparent to me that they're not doing a good job. One of the hardest things uh, it is to do as an actor is to be like in a, in a let's say, a blue screen or a green screen shot. When you're, when you're acting, before they composite in the creature or the, the, the peril that the, the person is having to deal with, like in Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs, uh, Lord of the Rings, some of the orgs, that sort of thing. And you'll often hear actors say that it's very difficult to act when they have to pretend that they're responding to something. Now, these are professional actors saying it's difficult. I think it's one of the easiest ways to detect a hoax is to listen to the actual participants on the video. Um, the recent Brown Mountain footage that came out about three months ago that purported uh, showed the Brown Mountain lights and the way that people were reacting to me was so patently you know, with such bad acting that I instantly, just on the basis of that, I mean, the image looked great, but just on the basis of the way that people were acting, it was obvious to me that they were, um, that this was confabulated. By the way, the Brown Mountain Lights in North Carolina, I went to see the Brown Mountain Lights with Alan Greenfield and my first wife, Geneva, back, I guess, in the 1970s. And we saw some lights in the distance and they came closer and closer. It was an airplane, folks. So we failed. Well, I uh, I don't know whether you know uh, Joshua Warren. He's uh, got a uh, website called Limmer. He was one of the ghost first uh, ghost authors that I actually read and liked. 
I found that uh, he's, he's done an investigation on the Brown Mountain Lights, which is also in our archives on the Dimension Zone, and a really good article on, on what he did to analyze what the lights were. And uh, he came up with the scientific evidence to show that, hey, it's a natural phenomenon. Oh, by the way, back in 2007, we talked with Lorraine Warren. On the yeah, his wife. Sure. His so wife. if you want to check that thing, it's still available in the archives, April 8th, 2007. So there you go. Okay, so we go back to Jerusalem. There is no sighting report. Isn't that really a major part of gathering UFO evidence, not just the photo, the film, whatever, which can be, as you point out, very easily faked and not <laughs> very easy to fake in a way that seems seamless. There's no sighting report. Nobody submitted a sighting report anywhere describing what they saw. They just provided pictures. Yeah, and the, the first thing that I would have done is, of course, contacted the airport to see if anything showed up on radar. You know, if I were an authority, and the authorities would get on it. And if something were picked up on radar that was anomalous, and of course, it would have to be cataloged. Now, a lot of times, I know that pilots will not report a UFO simply because of all the paperwork involved, but they do acknowledge that they do exist. They have seen them. They have been trailed, you know, on, in many instances. You know, when I first moved here to the to the Netherlands, I was here, it was in, the, in January three years ago. Uh, I'm on the fourth floor. I have an attic apartment. It's really kind of cool because I overlook the entire city. I could see the, you know, five kilometers away. And the best night here is on, on New Year's Eve when these, these guys blow up 65 million euros in, in uh, fireworks. It's just like World War Three going on. But I'm, I, I was out of my veranda, and it faces the, uh, the north. And I'm only about a half a mile away from the uh, North Sea. I can actually hear the waves when the windows open. It's about 2 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep, and I'm having a cigarette out on the veranda. And as I'm looking out, I see these two streams coming toward me that look like two planes on fire. Okay, oh, holy cow, look at all those, the, the, the planes, they're burning. I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is a disaster. And as they came towards me, they kind of stopped in midair. And, and they, were, they were tubular in shape. Uh, from within these two tubes, I saw these two lights come out of one and then one out of the other. The more distant one had the two and the closest one to me, which is probably about 10 kilometers, seven miles away, um, and, and they, they looked like big balls of light. Just they were I won't call them more. It was because I could see that they were oscillating. And I'm thinking, okay, what is that? And I watched them come closer and closer to the shore. And then eventually they both just faded away, and so did the, the, the tubes that they came out of. Did I see a UFO? Yeah, I think I saw two, not two, but three, and two events that I had never seen before. Um, that's not the only sighting I've ever seen. I've probably seen about 12, 13 sightings over the years. Um, and I've even investigated a pretty popular UFO case in Colorado. Which um, one was that? Yeah, which one was that? <laughs> well, you take a name that's a popular UFO case in Colorado. I have client confidentiality going on here. The, the Tim Edwards uh, footage in Slido? Uh, no, it's a little further north. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll mention that it, he was really popular with the initiative to get the alien uh, registry going. Okay, yeah, stand the man. Anyway, the thing is, is I ended up resigning from his investigation only because, you know, the guy does have a lot of really good evidence. I mean, I looked at some of the stuff he's got, and it is, in my opinion, irrefutable. This stuff is just wow. too good. I analyzed several streams of video. I cannot release it because, again, of confidentiality agreements. How about the, uh, uh, the little guy peeking through the window? Did you analyze that? I, you know, I saw the real video, and I cannot explain that real video. I oh. cannot explain it, but it was okay, not Okay, folks, this is Stan Romanek. We have to reveal <laughs> that. Truth. Okay, now, we have had Stan Romanek on the Paracast. We were none too impressed. But you're saying by looking at the original videos, you are impressed. I was impressed. I actually spoke with another another investigator that came out and actually set up surveillance equipment for him. She's really famous for doing crop circle analysis, Nancy Ooh. Talbot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Nancy and I had an extensive conversation with, uh, you know, over over uh, the case. And she bought a lot of uh, night vision equipment and surveillance equipment to photograph from the outside. And she sent me a video 
of uh, an orb coming over his house and then going around it and then going through the windows and through the walls. Then internally there are these these spots on the walls that look like burn marks but weren't burn marks but the latex paint bubbled it actually went through the video equipment because shortly after it went into the house the videos camera stopped working it went through the video equipment and actually and I looked at, I saw these boards I saw the equipment and it had about the size of a tennis ball and it went right straight through them and you can see it in each layer from the top of the metal in through the, the circuit boards down to the next piece of metal, down to the next unit that was beneath it. And it did it all the way through three of them. And then out through the cabinet underneath that they were being supported on in the garage. And it had the burn marks on the countertop in the same location where these units were sitting. There is nothing, in my opinion, that could have been so precise in, in lining those up and have those holes the same size and not damage anything but the circuitry and put kind of like a scorch mark on the metal itself. And it bubbled the metal slightly. You know, taking a, a magnifying glass and look at that metal, that metal was bubbled right where that circle was. I, I you know, there was a lot of evidence that he had. The problem with that you know, we, we saw was the fact that he also has evidence that's questionable. And our, our recommendation was that you don't release any questionable evidence. You know, you've got plenty of, of really substantial, high quality stuff to put out. You know, don't put out the, the, the stuff that could, you know, taint what you do have that's quality. You know, I won't voice an opinion one way or the other about that case, except to say... Oh, come on, Gene, you got to. Okay, but I will say this, you know, that one I'm not convinced about yet, but I, you know, welcome more of your evidence and analysis. But I've said in general that maybe a few of these contact claimants over the years had one or two genuine experiences of one sort or another. They embellish them because they appreciate the 15 minutes of fame that they got from being exactly. contactees, and therefore, basically, they mess up their entire case because you look at something, you say, okay, it's a lie here. You've told a lie here. We have to assume that everything else is a lie, whether exactly. it is or not, unfortunate. We have That's when I would talk about credibility. That's exactly what you want to avoid, which is why whenever I post something that I'm going to make a statement about, I usually get concurred by colleagues that I trust. We'll get into more of that in a moment. Yari Mikola joining us this week. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in the Paracast. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you own an Apple iPhone and love to listen to your favorite programs on GCN, I've got good news for you. I'm proud to announce that GCN has a brand new iPhone app available for our dedicated listeners at GCNlive.com. Listen to your favorite hard-hitting GCN programs live or on demand right on your iPhone. And the best part? The GCN iPhone app can be yours absolutely free. Download the iPhone app today by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. This is the final third of the show, our episode with Yari Mikola of the Dimension Zone. He's from The Hague, Netherlands. We've explored, of course, mostly American-based UFO and paranormal researchers, but sometimes we have exceptions. So A.J. Right. Gavard from Brazil. We have featured people like, for example, Timothy Good and Nick Pope from the U.K., researchers from Australia. So we're remedying that, although, as you see, 
<laughs> Yar is as American as they come because he spent a lot of years in America and he speaks impeccable English better than I speak English, better than Chris <laughs> speaks English. Well, at least better than I speak English. I don't know. Okay, so we're exploring this other case where you think there's compelling evidence. Now, to get right. back to anything, is there any indication back to, and we're going to leave Jerusalem after this, our little voyage to Jerusalem, anything at all that might indicate something, some genuine element, or do you think it has to be a fake completely based on what you've analyzed so far? Well, you know, the only way that I can positively, absolutely, without a doubt, confirm a video of a UFO is if I saw the bloody thing come down from the sky, land on the lawn, and do something, and then fly away. I know in myself that I am a credible witness. It doesn't mean that you're going to believe I'm a credible witness, but I know that I know in, in the fact that I saw. And these are the people that are really hard to come forward because there are those people that have seen and have had sightings that have said nothing. There are those that have been abducted that have never said anything because they don't want to be put into that pile of wackos. There are people who have, who have seen genuine, you know, had encounters of the third kind, but are afraid to step forward because of the ridicule that they'll get. If you really look at Hollywood, and, and this is something that I, I've looked at, I love sci-fi, and I love to read between the lines. Men in Black is a really good example. There are so many lines in that that could be... <laughs> information being disseminated to those that are willing to listen or to know what the heck they're talking about. Now, I understand this is a supposedly a comedy movie, The Men in Black and Men in Black 2. So where do you see things that indicate something genuine? Oh, it's just the, the whole context oh, of the is... film. It happens, you know, and, and there are snippets here and there. I love the scene when Will Smith uh, is watching Tommy Lee Jones grab a copy of The Inquirer or The World News off of a newsstand. <laughs> and he's, he's looking through it, and then Will Smith says, what are you reading that for? That's, you don't believe any of that. And he goes, well, we got to get this, the word of this stuff out somehow. But you know well, what's so funny now the about the National Enquirer is that some of the stories it has broken, such as, of course, the affair with former Senator John Edwards, presidential <laughs> candidate and everything. He had this affair with this woman. They had a child. Nobody would pay attention. It's in the National Enquirer. Guess right. what? It was real. Right. Yeah, and, and that's just it. So the thing is, is that there is information that may be disseminated to us that for those of us that will listen, we'll hear it. Okay, Same but who's disseminating this evidence? Is it the producers of the movie? Is it the government? Is it the silence group? Who? Well, <laughs> now we're getting into the weird yeah, and the wonderful. It's a $64 wonderful. million dollar question there, Gene. Yeah, it's a $64 million dollar question. I really do believe that the government is hiding a lot of things that they haven't been forthright with. No, no surprise there. And the thing is, is that I think that, in my opinion, we are not alone on this planet. You know, I do think that there's other entities here. I do believe that there are ways that they travel back and forth. I've often thought it was kind of humorous. You know, if they don't want us to see them, then why do they put these flashing lights on their crafts? It's like, yeah. you know, here I am, hello. But the thing is, is it, is it that it's not the time? You're talking about, you know, how these creatures or entities oh, or phenomena I, I pops in I, out to our reality. Go ahead. I don't believe that uh, we are alone on this planet, and I do believe that they have been here for an awful long time, hey, even to the point of manipulating the direction that humankind has gone. I mean, you take a look at some of the uh, recent technology that's come about in the last 40 years, let alone the last 400 years, and you see that, that we as humans have advanced so rapidly that it's almost to the point to where, where can we go in the next 10 years if it's not to Mars? The technology that we're getting is sometimes so far-fetched, like stealth technology, like night vision technology, you know, cloaking devices. Do we have those? I wouldn't put it past the government to have something like a cloaking device. Um, you know, so the thing is, is where are they and where did they come from and where are they getting this information? Certainly, we came out of caves, quote unquote, you know, and, and are we intelligent enough to, to deal with that? I'm sorry, I've driven across the United States and it scares me that some of these people can vote. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Oh, well, that starts a whole other bunch of questions. Okay. The politics return. Okay. But now, you know, let's talk about these miraculous inventions. So we assume, of course, that mankind is clever, the pace of invention, innovation is accelerating, or is E.T. influencing the picture? Are they providing some of this technology? 
Or why can't we do it ourselves? That's the big question, too. Well, you know, as far as why we can't do it ourselves, it's just kind of like, you know, when, when you're a kid and you turn 21 and you can start to drink, you know, you start getting drunk. You know, the new technology is like a toy, you know, with, especially with the military. Everything is always for something destructive. The question is, is if, if you think about it, Okay, when you think about it, the military has for years been been advancing and everything is always for military purpose. So all of the technology that's come about is being used for destruction and, and be, they say for, for our protection. But uh, come on, I mean, we knew there were no nukes in, in Iraq. We knew there were no nukes in uh, Afghanistan, but we needed a reason to go in there because there is oil there. Um, well, there's oil in Iraq, but Afghanistan has, of course, a lot of natural resources, not necessarily oil. Yeah, but see, there's a lot of oil in Chechnya, and the only way to get it to, to the coast into oil tankers is to run it across Afghanistan. So, and so, yeah, so, you know, you can keep adding it up. Oil is the name of the game. But when it comes to the technology, you know, why is it that we are, you know, we're not given privileged information and why is well NASA here okay, let's go back to NASA do you know that NASA's budget is larger than any other department in the United States government uh, I don't know about that the oh, defense yeah. department the defense department I think uh, it was bigger know. than the defense departments when it's not that now no I mean, maybe not now but it, it right was now, in 2000 it sure. was in 2002 and 2003 I did not is, know that. Yes, sir, it was. And that's why I think the shuttles have been cut back. But the thing is, is that most of the stuff that they do is top secret. Most yeah. of the stuff they do is for military. Yeah. Have now, you noticed I mean, the, new, the new Navy commercial? Uh, it ends in space, uh, almost kind of hinting around that uh, if you join the Navy now, you might be uh, you know, an officer in space. It's a very interesting commercial I had on the Super Bowl that uh, I, I haven't seen anybody mention it, but there was some real uh, obvious hints in there that uh, that uh, the Navy is in space. Let's put it that way. And of course, that that you know harkens back to the Gary McKinnon find uh, that uh, when he hacked into the uh, Defense Department computers, he found the list of off-planet uh, officers. What was interesting is uh, I read. An interesting uh, report. It wasn't from NASA, so it didn't come from there. But it was basically that, did we land on the moon? Well, that debate's been going on for years. The answer is yes, and the answer is no. The first two times we did. We were told not to come back the say, you, know, after, you know, after the first time, but we came went back a second time. And we started the third time. Guess what they did? They put a stop to it. That was Apollo 13. The, the three or four times after that were filmed on this planet because they were already committed to the public that we were going back to the moon. Well, I think Edgar Mitchell might have a, a kind of a <laughs> argument there because he, of course, was on Apollo 14. And, uh, and he, <clears throat> yeah, he's pretty know. vocal about the fact that uh, he did go to the moon and was the sixth man to walk on the moon. So yeah, it, it see, is a very I'll, it I'll, is uh, compelling argument, though. Yeah, Armstrong won't talk about it. Neither will Aldrin. No. Most people don't know that when Neil Armstrong came back, one of the first major things that he did uh, after the hoopla of the moon landing subsided in the early 70s was go looking for underground an underground city, I think, in Bolivia and was part of a team that uh, did this major spelunking expedition uh, in the Amazon. Not, not many people know that. We'll get into more of this in a moment. We have Yari Mikola. The site is called thedimensionzone.com. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. You expect professional service from your doctor, your accountant, and even the girl who takes your morning coffee order. Why not from your domain registrar, too? Namecheap.com provides stellar service with no sneaky upselling. We offer more features and security options for your website than there are ways to order a latte. And new domains come with WhoisGuard to protect your personal info. At Namecheap.com, you can get your domain for as low as $2.99. Now is a great time to get to know Namecheap.com. For 
58 years, fate has provided true reports of the strange and unknown. Fate brings you the latest in all aspects of the paranormal, like angels and miracles, psychic phenomena, ghosts, UFOs, and much, much more. To receive your complimentary Fate magazine, call now at 1-800-728-2730 or visit their website at www.fatemag.com. That's 1-800-728-2730. What are you waiting for? Your fate awaits. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states, it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. There's mounting evidence suggesting that there are people, governments, corporations, and whole professions intent on short-circuiting humanity's well-being. GMO, food legislation protecting big agriculture, the attempted elimination of vitamins and alternative medicines, it seems their hand has been tipped. They want to dictate your health, wealth, and your longevity. Whatever the outcome, we have a solution. Wild edible food. Why worry about food when all has been provided? We imagine that we were ejected from the garden and never invited back, but the garden's still here. There is an endless wild abundance which grows all over our green earth, just waiting for you to wake up and see it. Let author Linda Runyon teach you how to see, know, get, prepare, store, and eat wild edible food. Save money, add nutrition, and ignore the noise when you go shopping in nature's supermarket. Go to ofthefield.com and get started today. Or call 1-888-51-EAT-FREE. That's ofthefield.com or call 1-888-51-EAT-FREE and begin to see a different world. If you own a septic system or if you're facing costly septic system replacement, this message is for you. When you want to stop paying for pump outs and avoid backups, when you've had enough of the foul odors and costly repairs, use BioSafe One Septic Solution. Now there's an easy to use 100% guaranteed answer to all your septic system problems. BioSafe One Septic Solution. BioSafe One is patented and made specifically for all septic systems and made by the same team of scientists to help clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill. BioSafe One decontaminates and removes sludge, stops costly pump outs and repairs and remove septic system stench all with a 100 percent success rate see what gives biosafe one septic solution the advantage over any other septic product at biosafe one.com that's b-i-o-s-a-f-e-o-n-e.com biosafe one.com or call toll free 1-866-424-6663 that's 1-866-424-6663 biosafe one the guaranteed bio-friendly money-saving way to clean your septic system The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com Get in on all the action at forum.theparacast.com Yari Mikola joining us. The Dimension Zone is the site. I'm Gene Steinberg. Chris O'Brien's the co-host here in the Paracast. And now we raise the specter of fake moon missions, but how do we prove that? I mean, all the evidence we've seen has pretty well been debunked so far. That you know, the moon landings were faked. So how would we prove that, say, for example, E.T. or the lunarites or whatever they are came to the astronauts and said, you're not coming back here anymore, leave? Well, first first of all, and then we touched on it earlier in the show about the background being black on a lot of the moon photographs. There's little crosses on each of the film, uh, on each of the frames of film that were taken. Those crosses are identifiers to determine uh, uh, distance. And there are no crosses in the 
in the black background where there should be white crosses. Also, there's a lot of times when a cross will overlap an overlay that was put into the film, or there might be an image put onto the mask of the, uh, or the, the helmets of the astronauts with lighting when their back is to the light and their face is to the darkness, so there would be nothing to reflect. Looking at the rules of physics and the law of lighting, I mean, I, that's, I can't help myself when I'm doing that. I mean, it just happens. And so there's a lot of anomalies with the photographs that were taken between 14, 15, and 16, including the fact that 14 and 16 were approximately 1,000 miles apart of each other when they landed, but yet there's a section of film where the two astronauts are coming down the hill, and the hill is exactly the same hill from the same shot with the same boulders in the same locations. Okay, how did that happen? That's interesting. Also taking the lighting on several of the of the shots, there is no, uh, and again, this is analysis from what videos I had, <laughs> which weren't the originals. And by the way, they don't exist anymore because it's now digitized. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That, that Didn't they lose all that original footage, supposedly? Supposedly. There's no more available to anybody. It's well, all it digital. It does appear on some of the, the still photographs that there is a secondary light source, some sort of fill lighting that's coming in. Uh, oh, yeah. You side. can actually do a, a gamma lighting and, and dim and light, and you actually see filaments in, in, any, in, in a light source. It looks like the sun. Very powerful light, but also the shadows fall in different directions. You know, so there's a lot of things about the, the moon shots on 14, 15, and 16 that are questionable. But yet on, on 11 and 12, they, they look pretty good. Also, if you think about it, here's a lunar lander that's landing on powder-type dirt that basically got all over their stuff. But yet there was no powder on the feet of the landers. And when it took off, there was no, no cloud of dust that, that came up when it shot up, you know, from the moon to head back to, to Earth. Interesting. No. We can see some of the gear we left uh, from Earth. We can see some of the gear that was left behind by, by telescopes. So, I mean, that's uh-huh. one counter argument. But, but yeah, see, there's a lot 13, about those on, photographs. That's on 11 and 12, but we not from 14, 15, and 16. Uh, <laughs> the gear is from the Sea of Tranquility. That's the well, only place you Maybe can that's see. why Edgar Mitchell is so convinced there's ETs, because he was warned away. <laughs> Although, well, I don't know. A lot of the, I want to say, the reports that I've heard and, and been sent to me on articles within the magazine that have, some have, some haven't been published, is the fact that there are ancient artifacts up there. There are buildings, uh, ruins, uh, even some of them as high as five miles high. Yeah, okay, we've heard this piece. for quite a while, all these lunar anomalies, and on occasion we've explored them in the past. The big question is here, okay, how do we prove that? Where's the evidence to prove that? And if we're not going back to the moon anytime soon, how are we going to confirm anything except by photographic evidence of some kind? Now, the Japanese did send some uh, lunar mission, and they they took some excellent photographs of the moon. And I saw nothing on that that uh, would even signify that there's anything up there. And it was the high definition was available, and it took a long time to download, but I was able to get it. Also... um, What's his name? New Moon Rising. Did you guys see that? Or Moon Rising? Uh, the truth be told uh, about the lunar missions. Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm aware of that. that it's, it's, on our, it's, it's in the Enigma uh, video gallery on, the, on our website, on yeah. the Dimension Zone. But there's a, a series of films that actually goes over where he had taken a lot of photographs of the moon and video of the moon and then colored them in a way that it uses a color palette similar to the palette of the Earth. And it actually brought it alive to a three-dimensional look and uh, really brought a lot of things in the foreground. So have a look at that. I can't think of it off, off the name of it offhand. You'll think of it two seconds after we finish this show. Yeah, after we finish. And I can certainly send you the email and tell you where it's at. Well, you know, by the way, I should mention to our listeners that we hoodwink Yari into participating in the Paracast forums at forum.paracast.com. So possibly if you have the information, you'll post a question there. I have, I have a, a, a question about a case that's been ongoing that Nancy Talbot's been involved with. It's uh, occurring just up the road from you, the Robert uh, Vanderbroker uh, case. Are you familiar with that? Have you uh, done any sort of analytical work on some of the pretty intriguing photographs and, and, and footage that's come out of that particular case? Are you aware of it? Yes, I'm aware of it, and he has been debunked. 
Okay, hated. now let's get into that because we had Nancy Talbot on the show, and I think she hates us now because we were very skeptical on the Paracast of this particular incident. How has he been debunked? Well, he, he he's supposedly a psychic, and he was given a list of people that wanted to meet him, and he did a lot of research on uh, their families on the web, apparently. And he found that one of the questions... One of the things that he said he'd done is he was in contact with the father or the deceased of the person who wanted to make contact with it, with, with his father. And he said that he doesn't know what kind of work he did, but he was called this in, in Dutch. Ik Nederlands. I do speak Dutch. Not real well, but I do speak it and understand it. And that's not one of the seven dirty Dutch words. No, 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 no. Trust me, you know those. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could throw those at you. Wouldn't know, would you? That's right. But our network does. They got multilingual yeah. specialists who are going to basically it, catch us before we do it. Anyway, what he was doing is he was obviously researched the information because the profession that he listed his father as doing was unknown, and they thought it was you know he, he excused it as an old type work that you know we we probably don't do anymore. Well, it turned out that it was a misspelling on the web. When you add a letter to it, and I can't remember what the word is exactly because my Dutch is, like I said, not perfect, but it basically meant he was a mill grinder. He used to make, he used to blend the, the stuff to make beer, blend all the grains in, in, in the mill to make beer. All you had to do was add one letter so it was a misspelling on the web, but yet he quoted it as it was on the web. Uh, I've, I've been down to that area. As a matter of fact, I just got through work in that area across the line in Belgium. And I've driven by his place a few times to kind of see if I could spot any crop circles. And I didn't see anything. But I, I looked at some of the photographs of the crop circles. And, you know, there are some photographs that I can't explain. Uh, like bolts of lightning coming through th through the ceiling, going through him and through Nancy sitting at the table. Uh, I couldn't explain those. And uh, she sent me copies of her original digital, and I, I still can't explain them. Um, so, yeah, that was compelling. I'll but tell you again, what's compelling is the fact that our guest this week is Yari Mikola. Our co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, are devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to Mr. UFO at WebTV.net. That's Mr. UFO at WebTV.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Skip the long lines and high prices at the florist because right now at proflowers.com you can get two dozen assorted roses with a free glass vase and a free box of chocolates for just $29.99. Just visit proflowers.com. Look for the radio microphone in the upper right corner and enter the secret code 4444. Unlike overpriced flowers at the florist which sit in the cooler for days, our flowers are sent fresh cut from the fields and are guaranteed to stay fresh and beautiful for at least seven full days. Just visit proflowers.com today to get two dozen assorted roses with a free glass vase and free chocolates for only $29.99. Order now and pick the delivery date you want. It's guaranteed. But hurry, because Valentine's Day is this Monday, and our special offer ends this Friday. The only way to get this amazing deal is to visit proflowers.com. Look for the radio microphone in the upper right corner and enter the secret code 4444. 
Where have all the military surplus stores gone? Don't worry, you don't need one. Because everything you need at Military Surplus is at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com, one of the last surviving true military surplus stores in the country. Go online now to MainMilitary.com and discover a source for hard-to-find surplus items at true surplus prices. Surplus gun cleaning kits as low as $2.99. Complete chemical suits as low as $11.99. See our huge selection of gas masks, filters, and accessories. Finish and M10 gas masks are three for $30. And Swiss filters are three for $12. Searching for Strike Anywhere matches? MainMilitary.com has them. Plus a whole new product line of survival and first aid kits and lots more. Get free shipping on orders over $50 only at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com. Or call 877-608-0179. 877-608-0179. MainMilitary.com. The main name in military supply. Normal blood pressure, naturally. How would that make you feel? I'm Don from New Mexico. January of 2000, I had a heart attack. Then my real health began going downhill, and I had uh, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, poor vision, and I really wasn't sleeping well. I was a mess, pretty much. Don reports dramatic improvements with heart and body extract. I started taking uh, heart and body extract, and from within a few days, I started sleeping a lot better. My blood pressure uh, normalized, my blood sugar normalized, and uh, my sleep really did improve. Experience these benefits and more when your body gets what it needs with the assistance of heart and body extract. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. That's hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. And folks, I did not expect this at all. By the 7th, 8th, and 9th day, I saw dramatic improvements from taking heart and body extract. Details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for heart and body extract. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. This is Jim Mosley, editor of Saucer Smear, and I'm here to say a good word or two about the Paracast, which I believe is the gold standard of paranormal radio. Listen to it if you can. Two more segments left with our visit with Yari Mikola. He's in the Netherlands. Chris O'Brien, my co-host, and I, well, we're here in Arizona, about 120 miles apart. But you know what? We're in a virtual room on the Paracast. Okay, so is there a smoking gun with this case that we're talking about? I don't know where he's gone. But I would say that's a pretty much of a, of a smoking gun, that he was uh, basically giving information that he obviously pulled from the web. So he did good cold readings. We used to call them cold readings. And, of course, in the days of carnivals, they would have people who were just basically very smart, very intuitive, and could basically look at body language or how people answer things. And they would come up with a good cold reading, which is basically guessing things about a person, using that person and their prompts to get more and more closer to the facts. Here he was doing it the cheap, easy way, which was a Google search or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I've never met him personally. And every time I asked Nancy if I could meet him since I was here, you know, she wouldn't give me any information where he's at, but I was able to find his website. I never did make contact with him, especially since I talked with the one of the paranormal investigators here who told me the story I just related to you. We put that into the, as they say, the no box. Not a gray area, but something where we can just basically say this is a fake. Now, could it be like some of these other cases where maybe he had some kind of real experience of some sort and then wanted his 30 minutes of fame rather than the 15 minutes? I think that's what's happening is the fact that he does have some some evidence that, like I said, I couldn't explain. As far as the crop circles that I saw from the photographs that were provided to me by Nancy, the crop circles were crude at best. You know, they look like they could have been done by boards, but she did her analysis on them and, and found that, you know, the the nodes on them were stretched like what she explains in, in a real crop circle that's unexplainable, where the, it couldn't possibly have been done by boards. But uh, they did look like they were done by boards. I mean, they didn't look like any, any grave, beautiful image that you see you know, in the fields of England, which, by the way, I will be going with Andrew Collin this uh, next uh, crop circle season, and he's invited me to come out and take a look at some crop circles. I'm kind of looking forward to that. So you think some crop circles are more than just 
artistic creations on our part. Definitely. There's too much Im- and too much evidence to to be to the contrary. I mean, there is one guy who who was able to create an elaborate crop circle copy in a period of eight hours during the night to prove a point. He barely finished in time, and it wasn't quite the same size as the original. However, he did a good job, and it would have been a pretty good fake. But for the most part, I can just can't see a bunch of guys in a pub running out to the hillsides of England you know, in the middle of the night with boards and determining that they're going to make something so perfect in the dark that, that it defies explanation. I, I just don't buy that. It's just too unexplainable. Hmm. Well, are there some that are hoaxed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there definitely are. There are some. No question about it. That still is a very... Uh Obviously, it's a controversial subject, and uh, if you go to England and you start talking hoaxes with some of the crop circle researchers, uh, you will not be uh, very long in their <laughs> in their good stead. Let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, if you if you look at uh, John Lundgren, I think is where uh, is, uh, Team Satan and Matthew Williams and some of the other uh, claimed hoaxers. One of the most interesting stories that I've heard was uh, one of the the hoaxing crews was. Uh, Madly scrambling to finish a, a particular glyph before before dawn, and uh, they left. They got it done. They left somebody on a nearby kind of a, a small knoll uh, to to check out and see if you know who would be the first person to drive by and and be able to spot it. And he got up on this knoll and looked down, and right in the field next to the hoax circle was a fresh circle that hadn't been there the day before that had been done while they were doing their circle. It had been done in the next field and they had no idea. They never saw anything. They never heard anything. There were no lights, no anything. So so the hoaxes like, were bamboozled by a real... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like the, uh, it's like the, uh, what was it, the X-Files episode. I've mentioned this a couple times on the show uh, where you have the military abduction team dressed up as aliens doing an abduction on a roadside and then the real aliens show up and abduct them. That's one of my favorite all-time scenes from a TV show. <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> now, I want to ask you a question that was hinted at earlier. And of course, you work for the government. You get a sense of it. We talk about possibly faking some of those moon landings. So when we go to things like these UFO films over Temple Mount in Jerusalem, Israel, do we think that just some private people with their copies of Photoshop and Adobe After Effects and their camcorder put it all together, or maybe the government here or elsewhere did something to divert our attention or just to, shall we say, have fun? I'm not ruling out government intervention. I mean, the thing is, is it's, 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 it's very typical of the government to feed us truth and lies mixed together to confuse us. I mean, that's been going on since, you know, mankind first was able to, to bug to a woman. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just like, no, they've been lying and in, 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 filling our head with truths and lies and confuse us. So you basically either have to throw it all out or you have to believe it all. And the thing is, is it okay? So in most cases, people don't believe that UFOs exist, so they're going to make sure that we really believe that they don't. But maybe they're trying to make us think that now that they do, so they're putting out more quality. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. You call it. It seems pretty elaborate. It seems pretty elaborate with these additional, you know, uh, clips coming forward uh it, it's, it seems to be uh, a well-thought-out hoax, if it is a hoax, which I, I think we can pretty much agree that there's, there's enough elements to the footage to, to suggest that it, that it was fabricated. But I'm still uh, intrigued by the actual location that was chosen to do this and by the timing of it. And uh, it seems to me that there's some sort of uh, societal, sort of very subtle uh, societal programming or manipulation going on with the choice of the Dome of the Rock uh, mosque and, of course, obviously the uh, the old city of Jerusalem as the location. So this is something that uh, I don't see many people commenting on online. And uh, I think it's, it's it, to me, it's, in, it's an indication of a, a fairly elaborate agenda going on that doesn't solely have something to do with, with just UFOs and being sensational about UFOs. One of the theories that I actually have a tendency to agree with a lot of what I've heard and read and and studied is that we were genetically engineered as humans. You know, we have a genetic code that has one pair of chromosomes that are joined, and there's no other species on this planet that has a joined pair of chromosomes. Where did they come from, and how did they get there, and are they what actually makes us who we are today? You know, the fact that we only use, quote-unquote, 
but uh, 90% of our, of our brain is not abs- actually used for thinking, but maybe just, you know, controlling our body. I don't believe that, that it's capable of only using 10%. You know, we can think of processes faster than any supercomputer. The way our brain functions is just an instantaneous decision based on an analysis. You know, let's take a jet fighter having to make a last minute turn to avoid clipping an enemy plane coming at him. You know, that is not something you could program with a computer. And if you could, it would be too big to fit in the airplane. Well, of course, nowadays we try with our automobile technology to program in things like, well, it senses by radar or whatever, senses an approaching vehicle so the brakes are activated, things like that, where you get into the wrong lane and it gives you a signal. <laughs> and I've tried a couple of cars that do that and they're just downright annoying. So we're sort of trying anyway. Well, yeah, it's like the planes that, I, that I've been watching, uh, air, air, what is it, the uh, air disasters? <laughs> You know, it's like, okay, and this is from National Geographic, and they're, they're talking about planes that have brains for themselves, and if the wind's not right, it tries to take off again, well, it caused a big Air France disaster, you know, because it wasn't, <laughs> it, there was no altitude for it to take off with. Anyway. So basically, there are things, of course, that you can't program yet, at least from our yet. current state of technology. So even though we have supercomputers in our pockets, such as iPhones and Android phones, well, they're not supercomputers compared to the human brain. Hey, neighbors, we do want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like and what you don't like about the PowerCast. You can write us, news at thepowercast.com. That's news at thepowercast.com. I promise we will read each and every letter we get. We have Yari Mikola from The Dimension Zone. TheDimensionZone.com is the site. I'm Gene Steinberg. Our co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in The Paracast. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many files formats, I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. Becoming a modern smoker is now easier and more cost-effective, thanks to LeSig. Traditional smokers the world over love LeSig. E-cigarettes with a look, feel, and taste of real cigarettes, but without the nasty smoke, ashes, or stains. LeSig is powered by revolutionary microelectronic technology. A small, rechargeable battery and unique replaceable cartridge provide all the satisfaction and benefits of smoking without the smoke and all the hazards. See the large variety of LeSig e-cigarette supplies and accessories at LeSig.com. That's L-E-C-I. IG.com. LeSig is competitively priced, comes with the best customer service, a 30-day warranty, and satisfaction guaranteed. What a great gift idea. For a 10% discount, mention GCN when you call 870-518-4307. That's 870-518-4307. Ask for fast, free, same-day shipping. Order online at LeSig.com and use promo code GCN at checkout. That's L-E-C-I-G.com. LeSig for today's modern smoker. At HempUSA.org, we offer chemical-free products to people around the world, detoxifying, self-healing while rebuilding the immune system. We urge our listeners to please consider our largest selling product, MicroPlant Powder. Our MicroPlant Powder is rich in silica and probiotics to help rebuild the immune system and to create a healthy stomach flora. MicroPlant Powder is excellent for daily intake and is perfect to add to your storage shelter. We urge our listeners to please visit us at HempUSA.org. And remember, all of our products are chemical-free and healthy to eat. We constantly strive to give you the best service, highest quality, and rapid shipping anywhere. And we offer free shipping on orders over $95 in the U.S. 
please visit us at hempusa.org or call 908-691-2608. That's 908-691-2608. See what our powder, seeds, and oil can do for you at hempusa.org. They all laughed when I told them my body cleansing tonic was tea. But after 10 days, my body feels way more energized, and I've lost nearly 15 pounds. (laughs) They're not laughing now. That's what John from Oklahoma said about Life Change Tea. In the six months of being on the tea, all my digestive problems have cleared up. My energy levels have gone way up, and my constipation problems are no more. And that's what Michelle from California said about Life Change Tea from GetTheTea.com, the amazing all-natural tea that cleanses your body from toxins, chemicals, bacteria, viruses, and molds, while helping to lower high blood pressure, high cholesterol, lower blood sugar levels, and help you lose weight. Life Change Tea has no caffeine and is all natural, all organic. Go to GetTheTea.com today or call 928 308 0408. That's getthetea.com or call 928 308 0408. Life Change Tea really changes things. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hey neighbors, we do want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like and what you don't like about the Paracast. You can write us, news at thepowercast.com. That's news at thepowercast.com. We're in our final segment with Yari Mikola of the Dimension Zone talking to us from his palatial estate in The Hague, Netherlands. He's in the fourth floor attic or something, is it? We call Isn't everybody's home apartment? palatial estate. It's actually quite quite large for a one bedroom apartment. I mean, it's it's pretty big. It's got the slanted roofs. I feel like I'm the Starship Enterprise with the slanted walls. But engage, engage. There you go. <laughs> the only imitation you, I do in my entire life. I just did it and I failed at it, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please, <laughs> don't tell me about my bad jokes. <laughs> don't email. When well, we yes. talk about uh, about our origins. You know, in 2012 and and UFOs and alien abductions, you have to stop and wonder how much of it is due to the fact that in 2012 that maybe genetic code is going to be turned on and we're going to be given this this awakening. Um, You know, there's this Nibiru is supposed to be headed this direction. You know, it's just like there's just so many things that people talk about. It's hard to disseminate what's fact and what's fiction. And the whole objective of, you know, what I do and what the Dimension Zone is all about is letting people who have a valid argument post what it is that they have and discuss it. Uh, and if they want to write an article, we're more than willing to print it, you know, in the journal. But it, 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 the journal has to uh, have a, a, an ability to understand what it is you're trying to say and to try to say it as scientifically as possible without supposition. So give us some objective evidence as to why you have reached a conclusion. Okay, let's talk about the conclusion that we might be referring to here in another sense, which is, okay, we may have something happen in 2012 for whatever reason, maybe not. I mean, in the past, we say it's going to happen this time. We're going to have a global catastrophe in the year 2000 because of Y2K. And, of course, they sold lots of computers. People made lots of money, but nothing happened. Okay, so we don't know if it's going to happen or not. But what about disclosure? I mean, we always bring this up in the UFO field, a nasty subject from the 1950s with Major Donald Kehoe. They said, well, the government knows this. They know that ET's out there. They're going to tell us. So in 2011, they're still not telling us. What do you think? (laughs) Well, I think they never intended to tell us. And maybe they really don't know a lot either. You know, I remember the event being talked about in school one time about the Los Angeles uh, war over Los Angeles. It was during World War II, so before I was born. I'm old, but not that old. Uh, and uh, it was a UFO that was spotted, and the military fired upon it. And the thing is, is that people that were talking about it on the radio were very adamant that they actually saw this UFO. And it was like nothing they'd ever seen before. And in 1945, some of the stuff they talked about were just not even science fiction ideas yet. So the thing is, is have they been around? 
are they going to be around? And are they going to make themselves known? And the question is, are we being prepared for that? Are we being prepped? Because it'll destroy every religion that's on this con on this planet and make us look at things differently. I don't uh, know if it'll destroy every religion. Uh, the Vatican has already started uh, doing uh, – making statements that are inclusive of any sort of other life form out there. That, you're right. That, Actually, they their, have a their whole thing is you, you, know? can't, you, you can't put a lid or a cap on, on the creator's uh, creativity. So, By the uh, way, they there, built I a binocular. They built a binocular telescope in Arizona for that. Yeah, it's just up the road from me. Awesome. Well, kind of. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> it's all right. Well, it, my point is this: is I think that there is a process underway, at least in the uh, in the Vatican and and in um, certain you know, portions of Christianity. At least I think they're slowly uh, slowly you know preparing the the faithful for an eventual disclosure. But I think what I'm hearing you say is that disclosure is going to be on the part of the ETs that we're not going to have a, a true disclosure with a big D as Stephen Bassett says from the government that if anything is disclosed, it'll be the ETs. It'll make their presence known as in childhoods and uh, independence day style, um, you know, undeniable presence. In other words, is that correct? I, I, I agree. I, I think that's totally what's going to happen. And I don't believe there's only one alien race out there. I think there's multiple alien races. You know, if well, you think about, you know, if you think about how, perfect this planet is and everything that had to happen for it to exist and how far away it is from anything else that could even be remotely like it which we have yet to identify or find it's very rare and to take a look at what we're doing to this planet you know it's like okay guys we might have to intervene here but then again are there those factions that want to eradicate the disease and clean the planet up namely, i.e. humans, or those that are really want to help us.